Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Laura Noland at JSA. Joining me today is Aaron Chinoy, Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Server Farm. Aaron, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you for having me, Laura. Server Farm last joined us on JSA TV during PTC. So much has changed since then in the industry and our world. One big change to note for Server Farm has been the addition to your Toronto data center, which you accomplished during the pandemic to keep customers online. Can you tell us more about that, Aaron? Uh, sure. Um, so the Toronto facility was a data center that we acquired uh, just over a year ago. Um, and in very typical kind of server farm fashion, we took uh, an enterprise facility, uh, put in a, a significant amount of investment in terms of you know, modernizing the infrastructure, bringing it up to speed, uh, but also creating new capacity for, uh, for additional customer workloads. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, a lot has changed, especially in the last four or five months. Um, you know, we've had to deal with two kind of very interesting, somewhat sort of, you know, you know, sort of counteracting uh, requirements. One has been uh, increased demand from our customers. Uh, you know, clearly they're driving many more of their applications online and some of the applications that they have online are growing in terms of demand. So they've had to deal with that. Uh, at the same time, we've had to deal with, with creating that capacity for them to be able to grow into. Uh, under what has been, you know, some pretty challenging, you know, kind of construction circumstances in terms of uh, social distancing, um, you know, being able to limit the number of people on site. And um, so we started uh, this particular project uh, early on this year, uh, and we've just about managed to, to complete that, uh, you know, that construction facility off the, off the new Toronto data centre, uh, releasing an additional 14 megawatts of capacity into the market. Um, Interestingly enough, in record time, and um, so despite the pandemic, um, you know, we managed to figure out a, a number of interesting ways of, of changing how we, you know, how we constructed, how we, how we manage some of the construction. Um, um, and that's, you know, not the, you know, notwithstanding the challenge, uh, it's been an incredible, incredible achievement by the team. Absolutely an incredible achievement. Record time during a, a pandemic. That is, mm. that is remarkable. And, and something else to point out, I want to talk about the reuse of the existing Toronto facility, basically cut embodied carbon by an estimated 75%. And that's also remarkable. So could you tell us about the HKS report behind that number and then how it applies to server farms entire business model? Sure. Sure. And actually let, let me start with the, with the sort of business model. Um, I think our model has for a very long time, you know, almost 20 years now been uh, that you know, what we do for our customers is to remove the pain of managing physical infrastructure. Um, you know, and that pain exists in, in the buildings that they own and operate, the IT infrastructure that they own and operate, the mechanical and electrical equipment that, you know, that, 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 that supports all of that infrastructure. And, and we've become very, very good at taking all of those pieces together and building for our customers, you know, a picture that allows them to become more efficient. Um, and we do that by solving real estate problems, co-location problems, and IT operations problems. Um, about seven or eight months ago, we conducted a study specifically on our Chicago facility. It was HKS that, that, that did that report for us. Because uh, one thing that we wanted to demonstrate to the, to the market is that the way that we create capacity in existing facilities is actually the most green, you know, the most energy efficient, the most environmentally efficient way of creating capacity in the market. Because one thing it allows us to avoid is the building of a new building. Um, and when you look at the numbers, when you look at the, the amount of carbon uh, that is both embodied in terms of the construction of a, of a facility and the operational carbon, um, we can, through the reuse of existing facilities, as in the Chicago uh, instance, or more specifically in the Toronto facility, reduce that embodied carbon by, in this instance, 75%. And just to kind of put a little bit of a different number around that, what that basically means is if, that if you're a customer and you have a one megawatt IT requirement, you're going to save about two years of embodied carbon. That means that you're effectively going to be in a facility where for the first two years, you have no impact on the carbon footprint compared to if you were going to do the same thing in a brand new facility. 
Uh, and so, you know, in the current context of, of, of demand growing very rapidly, but also us being, you know, good stewards of the environment, you know, that is, that is a tough balancing act in the best of times. The fact that we're able to do that under such challenging circumstances, I think, again, is, a, is an amazing testament to, you know, the, the quality and the experience of the team. Aaron, you mentioned green and, and green power, and certainly the data center industry has been talking about sustainability measures like green power. So what do you think is the next frontier for data center sustainability? I'd say a couple of things. So one is what we just talked about. Um, there is a lot of capacity sitting in existing data centers. And I think as an industry, it's our responsibility to make sure that we use the existing capacity in the market as efficiently as possible. Um, a lot of that is, uh, it, when I say that, I mean the, that capacity that I, that, I, that I mentioned, you know, is sitting in enterprise, in enterprise facilities. So our ability to take those facilities, modernize them, create capacity in the market, and still deliver such an amazing saving from a sustainability perspective, is, is, it's fantastic. It's great that we can do that, and, and we would love to be joined by you know, by lots of other companies that, are, that, you know, that can do the same thing. But the other thing that's also important is that the IT load um, also needs to start to become much more efficient. Um, so I think, you know, 15 or so years ago, uh, you know, the world moved towards virtualization. It then started to move towards the cloud. And all of those things have been on the whole extremely good from a sustainability perspective because they're consolidating workloads. They're making as many applications as possible run on as little infrastructure as possible. Um, but we also need to do that for applications that can't either be virtualized or can't be moved to the cloud. They still have opportunities for, for efficiencies to be gained and those efficiencies lead, lead, lead to better sustainability. And one of the things in that area in particular is most organizations are very, very good at using space much more quickly than they are at using power. Um, and that unfortunately ties up resources, it ties up infrastructure. So if we can help our customers, which is really what we do every day of the week, if we can help our customers become more efficient by using space and power and network and all of the other resources that make up a data center in as balanced a way as possible, we can, you know, we can, we can provide more uh, you know, more capabilities in terms of achieving better sustainability for our customers. Aaron, we are just about out of time, but where can our viewers go to learn more about Server Farm and, and all that we've talked about today? Well, a couple of places. Uh, the Server Farm website, so serverfarmllc.com, uh, but also follow us on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Um, you'll find us on, on LinkedIn, obviously, as Server Farm and, and, uh, and, and on Twitter as well. So, yep, we'll, we'd love, to, love you to join us in the conversation online there. We will find you there for sure. Aaron, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. Happy networking.